Hi, I'm Luke Boserman, the blogger behind the Weekly Holler. This week, I want to tell you the story of an artist, a bison, and a coin that all left their mark on American history. James Earl Frazier was born on the Minnesota frontier in 1876, the same year as the Battle of Little Bighorn. He was surrounded by frontier and American Indian themes as he grew up. When Frazier wasn't living on his family's ranch, he traveled with his father, a mechanical engineer for the Chicago-Milwaukee Railroad, and slept on the floor of a boxcar covered by painted Indian buffalo skins. Frazier once wrote a letter to a young fan describing his childhood. A long time ago, when I was a small boy, I lived in the Indian country of Dakota, in the land that belonged to the Indians, and I saw them in their villages, crossing the prairies on their hunting expeditions. Often they stopped beside our ranch house and camped and traded rabbits and other game for chickens. They seemed very happy until the order came to place them on reservations. One group after another was surrounded by soldiers and herded beyond the Missouri River. I realized that they were always being sent further west, and I often heard my father say that the Indians would someday be pushed into the Pacific Ocean, and I think that accounted for my sympathetic feeling for them. During his childhood years, Frazier became interested in sculpture. He started making animal figurines out of soft chalk stone which he found in a quarry near his house. In 1891, when he was 15 years old, he enrolled in the Art Institute of Chicago with the goal of becoming a professional sculptor. At 17 years old, Frazier sculpted a piece that would launch him to fame. It was called The End of the Trail. The sculpture became an iconic American image, depicting an utterly defeated American Indian warrior slumped over his equally exhausted pony. The End of the Trail brought Frazier awards and secured him the mentorship of the great American sculptor, Augustus St. Gaudens. In 1911, the Taft administration decided to replace the Liberty Head nickel with a new coin and commissioned Frazier to do the work. To accomplish the design, Frazier drew on inspiration from his upbringing in the West. My object, he said, was to achieve a coin which would be truly American and that could not be confused with the currency of any other country. I made sure, therefore, to use none of the attributes which other nations had used in the past. And in my search for symbols, I found no motif within the boundaries of the United States so distinctive as the American buffalo or bison. For his design, Frazier needed a model. Most evidence suggests that he used a bull named Black Diamond that lived at the Central Park Menagerie in New York. I stood for hours, Frazier said, watching and catching his form and mood in plastic clay. Black Diamond was less conscious of the honor being conferred upon him than of the annoyance which he suffered from insistent gazing upon him. He refused point blank to permit me to get side views of him and stubbornly showed his front face most of the time. On January 27, 1913, the Philadelphia Mint began stamping out the first run of Buffalo Nickels. They ran until 1938, making Black Diamond's profile the most widely distributed image of a bison in the world. The coins were released into circulation on March 4, 1913, and received praise due to their truly American design. One critic of the nickel said of the bison, its head droops as if it had lost all hope in the world, and even the sculptor was not able to raise it. This characteristic could be due to the fact that Black Diamond lived in a very small cage, and the tight confines affected his posture. The buffalo nickel was produced for 25 years. It was retired in 1938 and replaced by the Jefferson nickel. James Earl Frazier went on to design several national monuments. Black Diamond himself was put up for auction in New York City in 1915. Frazier wrote that he had nearly killed his keeper, and this had led to the sale. When there were no bidders, he was offered for private sale. His keeper, Bill Snyder, hoped to get $500 for Black Diamond, but the best offer he received was for $300 from August Sills a dealer in exotic meats. Sills took Black Diamond to his butcher shop where the bison was turned into 1,020 pounds of meat. Black Diamond's head was mounted and hung on the wall of Sills' office. The head remained there until around 1918. Later it passed into the possession of the firm that bought out Sills and remained in their office until 1978. 
Black Diamond's head still exists and is occasionally displayed at coin shows. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Weekly Holler. For more stories from history and folklore, check out theweeklyholler.com and sign up for our email newsletter. You can also find the Weekly Holler on Facebook, YouTube, and the Weekly Holler podcast.